One of the problems with cutting down trees is you end up with a bunch of slash, unwanted woody debris. One of the challenges of forest operations is dealing with all this slash. In this case, we're going to put it to good use, or at least to use. I don't know how good it's going to be. Sometimes it's just the thought that counts. We have this little gully right here that should be running this time of year. Normally in early January, which it is now, this would be full of water because it's winter and this is when we get our rain. But we just haven't had much. We're in a drought and this thing is dry. But on a normal year when we get a lot of rain in the winter, we can get a lot of water coming down here when we get big storms. Upstream from here, there are some places that can be prone to erosion. This is an area upstream. Some parts of this property have very erosive decomposed granite soil. I filled this gully up with slash to stop the erosion here. If you get bare soil, the rain will wash the soil away. I need to put some rock on this part of the road to get the erosion to stop. It all washes downstream eventually into the ocean and you lose your topsoil. I have taken steps to reduce a lot of that erosion, but we're going to use this slash to try to catch some of that if it actually does happen. That way, if we do have a problem, the topsoil will build up here instead of washing away to the ocean. I'd rather hold on to my topsoil than have it wash away. I also want to get the slash away from the base of these trees because if we have a wildfire, all this slash will burn so hot it will scorch the base of the trees. If you can keep the slash away from the base of trees, they're more likely to survive a wildfire. After about 20, 30 minutes worth of work, got all this cleaned up. And now we have a sediment catching dam. Now when sediment washes down the gully, it will get caught up here and the sediment will build up here and build up the soil here, creating some miniature bottom land. There are of course holes between the branches. Water will flow through and some sediment will flow through. In high water, leaves and debris will wash down, get caught up in the holes, plug up the holes, or at least partly plug the holes. Some sediment will still go by, but it will probably hold most of it. There's still a little bit more slash down below. Instead of hauling all this slash up to that pile, which is already big enough, we don't want it to be too big, or it could be a fire hazard right next to the access road. We can make a new dam down below. So anything that gets by this one might get hung up in that one. First, I'll cut some of this brush out of the way. Just below that dam, we have a spot here where it's starting to erode a hole and erode away this flat spot up here. There's a lot of vegetation here, so the erosion is a slow process. But we'll put another dam right here, not only slow it down, but maybe even reverse it. Got that slash cleaned up away from the road, away from these trees, and created a sediment catchment dam. We can cut down all the trees, the trees will grow back. We can burn the place, the vegetation will grow back. But when you lose your topsoil, it's gone forever. It's never coming back, not in a lifetime. Without the topsoil, you have nothing except for subsoil. And with only subsoil, even the trees won't grow back very well. When you have a pile of sticks like this crossing a stream, does it remind you of anything? Reminds me of a beaver dam. 
when I was looking in the viewfinder, it doesn't look like a beaver dam on camera, but here in person, it looks kind of like a beaver dam. One up here, one down there. Okay, a very, very crude beaver dam. That's what beavers did here for thousands of years or more. There's a reason Oregon is called the beaver state. Our streams had beaver dams, sometimes stair-step beaver dams all the way up as far as there was water. Those beaver dams would catch sediment, they would hold back water, they provided fish habitat, all kinds of habitat. But decades ago, we killed the beavers. They're gone. There aren't any beavers here anymore. There are in some parts of the state, but none around here. Now that the beavers are gone, all the streams are no longer what they used to be. In the absence of beavers, I am doing a little bit of what they would do. Although they do a much better job of it than I do. This gully may be a bad example because water doesn't run in it enough of the year to support beavers. There is a year-round creek on the property. I was talking to some people who knew the original homesteaders who owned the property down below. They said this creek, not this one, but the year-round one over there, used to be stair-step beaver dams, and it was full of trout. Much different than it is now. No beaver dams, the water just rushes through, and there are only a few trout in there. But if I was to try to do this on a Type F stream like that one, the Department of Fish and Wildlife would probably get very angry with me. The real creek can get too much water in it. This would probably wash out if I tried to build this. It needs real beavers. Beavers know how to make a real strong dam. Have you ever tore a beaver dam apart before? Maybe one day I'll tell that story. Beaver dams are so tough. One thing to be careful with with something like this, if there's a culvert down below, if it's a stream that could wash this debris down, it could plug up a culvert and wash your road out. But I don't think there's enough water comes down this gully for that to be a problem here. That's all of this I had planned to do. Since I have plenty of time and a partial tank of gas still, we could do some thinning. I have this thick area right by this main access road. I'd like to get it thinned out, partly to reduce the wildfire danger so I can have defensible space along the access road and just to make it look nice and have a more healthy forest. We'll start out with this leaning cedar. It's too crooked to be worth anything.
I think I've created enough of a mess for today. This is just a light thinning. I'll be taking these merchantable dug fir out in favor of the oaks because the fir are going to die anyway. But I'll save that for when market and weather conditions are more favorable for that. I'm leaving the oaks thick because I don't know which ones will be damaged when I take these bigger trees out. Then if some of them get damaged, there'll be other trees to take their place. That's all I have for today. See you soon. One of the challenges of forestry is dealing with all that woody... We have this little... It should be running. It should be running by now at the end. I have taken steps to reduce a lot of that.